Topping today's news, a young man shot to death during a Sunday afternoon shootout with police. The man suspected of the brutal murders of a mother and her daughter last week was in court today. Police investigating the shooting death of a man on Abaco and the new consulate opens in Canada. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. What was supposed to be a routine traffic stop ended in a deadly high-speed chase, leaving one man dead. This latest incident, classified as a police-involved shooting, unfolded shortly before 4 p.m. on Sunday in the quiet Seven Hills community off Blue Hill Road South. On the scene, police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings gave brief facts as to what took place. Officers from the Southwestern Division were conducting routine road checks at the intersection of Gladstone Road and Fire Trail Road when they observed the driver of a dark colored Nissan Cube acting suspicious. They attempted to stop the driver, however, he sped off at a high rate of speed. Thus, a chase ensued, which resulted in, which ended, I should say, in the Seven Hills area, where there was an exchange of gunshots, which resulted in the driver being shot fatally. Chief Superintendent Skippings only giving limited details as to what transpired as she says the investigations are now into the hands of His Majesty's coroner. What is clear though, and it's evident however, there was an exchange of gunshots between the police and the suspect as bullet holes were seen in nearby vehicles of uh, the neighbors. Chief Superintendent Skippings once again giving a strong warning to those who insist on engaging the police. The, the, the law says, if I, if I can pull it deep out of my mind at this time, that the force used must be commensurate with the threat. And if an individual pulls a weapon, the police officer will pull their weapon as well. Police officers are humans. Police officers have families as well. And they're going to protect, or we are going to protect ourselves. And so we ask members of the public, if you know your families are involved in criminal activity, you know your families may have weapons, they may have drugs, etc. We're asking you, partner with us. We don't need any further incidents occurring. The man believed to be responsible for the death of a mother and her teen daughter had his time in court this morning. 23-year-old Blake Strawn of Ross Connor appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt, where he was charged with the double murder of Allison and Trevonica Thompson. Preliminary reports reveal the incident reportedly occurred sometime between Tuesday, April 11th and Friday, April 14th, 2023. The lifeless bodies of two females were discovered in an apartment building above Dragon's Pet Store located on Ross Corner. The victims were partially decomposed with lacerations about their bodies. The accused, not represented by an attorney, was not required to enter a plea. Bail was not granted. He was denied bail. The 23-year-old has been remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. He returns to court on July 27th. There he will be presented with a voluntary bill of indictment. The country's latest homicide taking place on Abaco, a shooting incident which has resulted in the death of a 36-year-old male of Marsh Harbor, Abaco. Police say shortly before 2 a.m. this morning, officers received reports of a shooting incident that occurred at a business establishment in Dundas Town where a male was shot multiple times about the body. Emergency medical services attended the scene and transported the victim to the local clinic where he was seen and examined by a doctor who pronounced him dead. Police investigations continue into that matter. While gun violence has been a concern for many communities across New Providence, the Baines and Grantstown community in recent weeks has been one of the so-called hotspots, as referred to by police. For instance, there have been a number of shootings on Finlayson Street, resulting in the death of several young men, while others have been left seriously injured after being shot. Last week, Wade Watson, the Member of Parliament for the Baines and Grantstown constituency, called for the young men, particularly in his constituency, to cease the violence and engage in more positive lifestyles. On a more somber, no somber note, Madam Speaker, um, I hate to dampen the spirit, but Madam Speaker, in, in most recent times, we had a, a spate or a spot of murders in the Bain and Grand Star constituency, and I wish to convey my condolences to the, to the families. 
I also want to make a clarion call, Madam Speaker, to our young men, um, especially in my constituency, um, to put down the guns and find, find better means for which we can resolve our, our challenges and our issues and make certain that uh, we do the right thing, which is to take care and be our brother's keeper as opposed to uh, annihilating our brother's from time to time. Mr. Watson, who is also the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, says he has reached out to the police for additional assistance in his constituency with a view of stemming the violence. It's, 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 a, it's a vexing situation, but I had an opportunity to, to meet um, with the Commissioner of Police, and he, is in, he has encouraged me that he will beef up patrols and also he will make certain that we install a number of CCCTVs to, to try to prevent some of the murders that are occurring within, the, within our constituency. During the recent holiday weekend on Dunmore Street, also in the Baines and Grantstown community, a man shot and killed his neighbor and attempted to kill another neighbor on Easter Sunday after they got into an altercation. The 31-year-old suspect has since been captured, taken to court, and is currently at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services awaiting trial. Bahamians living in Canada have another office they can turn to if need be, if they need assistance, whether it's to receive aid, emergency assistance, and even ease of access to conduct business in Canada. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs officially opened a Bahamas Consulate General Office in Toronto, Canada on Saturday, an integral component of the Davis administration's foreign policy to expand the reach and influence of the Bahamas to protect its citizens and their interests worldwide. Prime Minister Philip Davis, in his remarks at the official ribbon cutting, the ceremony he noted that the opening of the consulate marks a significant milestone in the deepening of diplomatic relations between the Bahamas and Canada. The Prime Minister also spoke to the future of exploring new avenues for collaboration and investment, adding that the government is eager to work with Canada to further strengthen trade relations, attract foreign direct investments, and explore mutually beneficial opportunities, particularly in renewable energy, infrastructure, and technology. Prime Minister Davis said the partnership between the Bahamas and Canada will not only contribute to the prosperity of Canada, but also to the Bahamas as well. And finally, in this segment, an automated system malfunction is the cause for the repeated delays of some 900 participants in the Public Service Professionals Engagement Program, or PSPEP. Minister of State for Public Service Pia glover Rural issued a statement on the matter on Sunday afternoon, advising participants that ongoing delays in the payroll process are being addressed with urgency. The state minister spoke with reporters on the sidelines of the training session for the public service at the University of the Bahamas. We have been experiencing challenges uh, and some of these are systemic, and that's what we're working on with our reimagination and uh, re re reformation of the public service. We shouldn't feel like operating from a place of mediocrity is because it's commonplace that it is the right standard. So we have had long-standing issues of payroll when it comes to public service, and I've said in countless communications that as long as persons work, they should be properly and duly compensated for their work. So there's been a number of challenges with payroll. Um, some are systemic and that's a part of the automation process and the HRMIS systems that we want to bring into play along with the Ministry of Finance. Payments were due to some participants on Friday, April 14th, with a statement from the minister noting that the payments will be received over the course of the next 48 hours. Mrs. Glover Roll also extended her apologies. So we're still working through challenges you know we still have human beings who are performing these services there's room for human error uh, this is unfortunate to the persons that are affected uh, on the back end but we're doing all we can in analyzing these processes and and improving them each step of the way i am always apologetic to our participants who work put in the work and when payday comes their compensation isn't there but we have a commitment from our teams. We've made some adjustment to ensure that we are doing a better job of ensuring that our participants are paid on time, every time. 
As this is the second time in recent weeks that participants have not been paid on time, critics say there should be no excuses. Minister Glover Roll says her ministry has acknowledged the problem, analyzed it, and is working on finding a solution. Well, some of the solutions are, do we need to adjust our timelines in terms of getting payroll in? Then we have had instances where we are, are waiting on timesheets from where the various ministries that participants are deployed at. And additionally, the government has processes. So while payroll comes to the Ministry of Public Service, it's then passed on to another ministry and then passed on to banking institutions. So there are a number of steps in the process. We don't have full control of the entire process, but wherever we can uh, have control of the process and improve the process, that's what we're supposed to do and that's what we're doing. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.